Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here. Want to see how to send one attachment or multiple attachments from an item in a SharePoint list? Well, if that's the case, you're in the right spot. Let's get over and see how to get it done. Before we begin, if you are interested in learning more about the Power Platform, please go to prag.work slash map40 where you will get 40% off our on-demand learning subscription, which has access to over 100 different courses. Let's get on to the video. All right, so let's get it done. So here is the idea. As a teacher, sometimes I would want uh, attachments to to get sent out to multiple people on my in my department based on lesson planning ideas and so that's the scenario I have because this is all about power platform for educators so what I have here is I have a SharePoint list where my teachers are gonna go in and upload some basic lesson plans and then give those out to the rest of the group now these could be tests these could be quizzes I'm just going with kind of like this lesson plan idea for my algebra cohort so I have a SharePoint list. This is just the title column. I have the planned instruction date, who the creator is, and then when we make the new record, we'll also be able to add in attachments. And I want those attachments to be sent out to my other colleagues in the algebra cohort. So the way that we get this done is I head on over here back or over to make.powerautomate.com. And then from here, I'm going to go to my create section. Uh, and in this case, this would be an automated cloud flow because we're gonna monitor any time a new record has been made. So I'm gonna choose automated cloud flow here. And I'll give it a name, I'll call this SP for SharePoint uh, Algebra Cohort, because that's the name of the list. These are just my naming conventions. And then I'll just put in lesson plan attachments. So then I have to figure out what is gonna be my trigger. Well, in this case, it's any time one of my teachers creates a new record on this SharePoint list. And again, I know I'm doing this with lesson plans, but this could be any time that you're just wanting to get attachments automatically sent out as in an email to individual users. So I'm gonna come on over here and hit create. Now from here, I'm not gonna use the new designer today. So I'm gonna flip off of here and go into the classic designer. And the first part is when an item is created. Now I'm also gonna rename this here so I can give myself a little bit more context. And I'm gonna put new lesson plan record made. So then the next thing I need to do is point it to my site address of my SharePoint site. And what you'll see, sometimes this happens when you make a new SharePoint site and you're ready to start using it, sometimes in flow, it doesn't recognize it within the first few minutes. So I did this on purpose to show you how to put this site in, because it might be, uh, you might think oh, I'll just paste in the SharePoint site. Well, if you do that, it's not gonna quite work. We have to click enter custom value first before we put in the site address. So I'm gonna come on over and I'm gonna get my SharePoint site address from my home section here. So I'm gonna come on over, I'm gonna copy out. Notice the .aspx is not in the URL. Uh, if it is, click home the second time and then it'll get rid of that. We can't have that extension. Then I'll come back on over, I'll choose enter custom value and now I can paste in that SharePoint site. Once I paste in that SharePoint site, I can then come on over here and point it to my algebra cohort. And that's the name of my list. So now the next thing I need to do is it pulls in the actual record. And what would be great is if we could just use the attachment dynamic content in the future parts of the flow. Uh, but unfortunately can't do that. We have to do two other different actions. One, we have to get the attachments from the record and then secondly, to use that file, we have to get the file content from those attachments as well. So that's what we're gonna set up next. So the next part here is I'm gonna click on new step and I'm gonna say, well, from the item that was just created, I want to go out and get all the attachments that are associated with that record. So I'm gonna choose my get attachments operations. All right, and I'm also gonna do a rename here and I'm just gonna give myself context getting attachments from record created. So again, I need to point it to my SharePoint site. So I'm gonna hit my drop down. Once again, it's not popping up. So I'm gonna click enter custom value. I'm gonna paste in that SharePoint site. Then I'm gonna point it to the list where I'm trying to get the attachments from. And now it says, okay, well I can do that, but I need to know what record am I getting this from? And so when you make a SharePoint record, there's an ID column stored in the background. So I can use the ID column that was collected from when the item is created. So I'm gonna come on over here. So when an item is created, I need to get the ID, and that is now going to pull in the attachments. Now my next step is I need to get the file content from there. So now I go in and put in another new step. Now this step is called get file content. 
So it brought the attachments in, but now I want to use that information, the file content in the actual email. So I'm gonna come on down here and choose get file content. Then from the site address, most likely again, when I hit the drop down, probably still gonna to have to, yep, gonna to have to enter in my custom value. Now once the SharePoint list and site have been created for a while, you're not gonna to have to do this copying and pasting idea every time. And then I'm gonna choose my file identifier. So I'm gonna select my file, and then now I need to choose for the file identifier, I see two different IDs here. Uh, is it the one from the get attachments or is it the one from the when an item is created? Uh, and this is why, you know, naming your different steps are really important. In this case, it's from the get attachments. I need that file ID that was created in the background. So I'm gonna choose this file identifier from the get attachments. Now what you'll notice right now, it has put in an apply to each. So what that means is saying, hey, we got attachments. There could be more than one attachment there. So for each attachment that comes in, I'm going to apply all these next actions that you're asking me to do. Uh, and in this case, we're going to send out an email. So if five attachments come in, five separate emails will be passed out. You might say, Matt, that's not what I want. Is there a way to consolidate all of these into one email? Uh, yes, there is, and that's something we'll be doing here in just a few moments. So let's take a look at this first part, how it would operate. So if I came on over here into my apply to each, so it's going to get the file content from each attachment that's passed in, and I'm going to click add an action here, and I'm just going to send myself an email. So send email, and then I'm going to do send an email v2, and then I'm going to send it to myself. Now again, this is where I would put in all the different people. So if I wanted to send it to you know myself for testing purposes, and then let's say lab admin six was also one of my teachers in the cohort, so on and so forth, then I would just start to put in all the email addresses that I need here. And then I'm just gonna put in a subject, and I'm gonna use some dynamic content. One of the columns I have on this list, uh, I called it the creator. And the creator was a person lookup column, so to speak. So I'm gonna say, let's use the creator's display name, and I'm gonna go apostrophe S, uh, created a new lesson plan. And then I'm just gonna put in here, uh, new lesson plan four, and I think I even put a date in here for the planned instruction date, has been submitted for your resource. Moving forward, for your resources, moving forward. All right, so just a nice little email here. We can make it whatever we want. But in terms of using the actual attachments, this has to come here in the advanced options. So in the advanced options, this is where we choose to add attachments to the email. So for the attachments name, I'm going to click on inside and I'm going to start using some dynamic content. And what we can see here is from the get attachments, I can use the display name of the attachment itself. Picture perfect. That's what I want. So I'm going to click on that. Then for the attachments content, I need to use the file content that was retrieved from the get file content action. So I'm going to choose that here as well. And then from here, I'm just going to do a quick save. So now that the flow is saved, let's go on over here and test it. So I'm going to click on test, I'm going to manually do this, click here, and then I'm going to come on over into my SharePoint list and I'm going to add in a new record. So I'll just call this the algebra quadratics, lessons, I'll put in a plan start date, put in a creator, I'll say it was lab admin 10, and then I'm gonna add some attachments. All right, so now I have added in some attachments, so I'm gonna come on over here and click on save. And what should hopefully happen at this point is my flow is now going to kick off. We can see now that this flow is running, it says your flow ran successfully, and what we'll notice when I bring over my email here, I have two separate emails. So if I click on this first one here, this is my demonstration March uh, file that I added in, I'll close off of it. And if I click on this one here, I'll get my other one. And why did I get two different emails? Well, the reason I got two different emails here is because of this apply to each. It got the attachments and there were two of them. And so for each one that came through, it had to get the file content after the file content was retrieved, it then sent that inside of the email. And because there was two attachments, that is the reason why I received two emails. Now you might be saying, well, what if I wanna consolidate this? What if you know they're gonna load five different things? I don't want five separate emails for each file. 
is there another way to handle this? Uh, yes, there is. It's a little bit more advanced, uh, but let's take a look and see how we can get that executed here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this flow and I'm gonna edit this flow. And I'm gonna remove this stuff from earlier. So that would be great if you want one individual email for each attachment that was here. Uh, but in my case, I don't want that this time. So I'm gonna click on delete here. And I'm gonna click on okay. So the first thing I need to do is I need to store all these attachments as an array so I can pass multiple values to the same email itself. Now there's a little trick to doing this. Well, first let's start off with this. We're going to start off with a new step and I'm gonna go back into the send email action. So I'm gonna put in my send an email here and I'm just gonna rename this one. This is gonna be called email, one email for all attachments one email for all attachments. And then I'm gonna send it to myself. Again, this is where we could send it to multiple people if we wanted to. So lab admin 11, and I'm gonna say all attachments for lesson. And then the body, hey, here are all the attachments from, and then I'll just go back and put in that requester or that creator display name. Now in the advanced options here, what we saw is this is the ability to add one attachment. Now you can also, in an email, put in multiple attachments. So if I click on add new item again, we can see that we have multiple. But in our case, this is where we would have to hard code it. Uh, so that's not going to make sense. We have to use our dynamic content. So I'm actually not gonna go with the attachments name number two. But the question becomes, how do I use the dynamic content and not use the apply to each? Well, right over here, it says switch input to entire array. So if I click on switch input to entire array, this is gonna allow me to pass an array of data inside of it. I just have to store that array of data somewhere earlier in the flow itself. Uh, now, the problem with doing it this way is figuring out what the array even looks like. So let me give you a little trick here. I'm gonna come on back to the original and I'm just gonna put in test name and I'm gonna put in the word test content. Now, why am I doing that? Well, because of this trick. If I go switch to input entire array, it's gonna show me how the array needs to be uh, basically structured. And the way that it needs to be identified is name, that's going to go with the name of the attachment content bytes, that's gonna be the file contents of those attachments. So what we do is we copy all of this information out for the time being, because we're going to need to use that here in just a few moments. So I'm gonna copy that out here. All right, so now that I've got it copied out. Now we're gonna come back to the email step in a second, but this is the little trick to help getting us our pinned uh, to array variable. So up here at the top, after my get attachments, what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a variable, something to store data for me. So I'm gonna add an action. What this variable is going to store is it is going to store the actual contents of all the attachments and the names of all the attachments. So I'm gonna choose initialize variable and I'm gonna rename this so I know use for storing all attachment names and content. So I'm actually gonna give it a name called var attachments. Now the type, because we're passing in multiple values, this is where we use an array. So it's a multiple list of items that have been structured for us. Now for the value, we don't know what the value is just yet. So we're just gonna go with the initialize variable. So we got the attachments, we're gonna initialize a variable, but what we don't have, like we had in the earlier one, was getting the file content. So after my initialize variable, I'm gonna add in another step here. And what the goal of this step is to get the content of each and every attachment and then store it in this variable that I can then pass into just one singular email. So I'm gonna click add in action here. And from here, I'm gonna say, I wanna go back to get file content. And so that's gonna be my SharePoint connector here. So I'm gonna choose get file content and I'm gonna come on over here and rename get file content for attachments on list. So I'm gonna point it to my site address here. There it goes, now it's finally showing up, so my math department. Then I'm gonna choose my file uh, identifier. So for that file identifier, same exact thing. What I want to do over here 
is bring on over and bring in from my git attachments the file identifier. So I'm going to choose it and immediately once again it says hey there could be multiple so I'm going to apply this to each and every single one that you have. So now that I have that part here, each time that this iterates through, I want to say, hey, take that first file, store it in this array. The second one goes, add that to the array. The third one, add it, add it, add it. So if there was 10 files, it would store all 10 names and all 10 file contents into this array variable that we can then pass into the email itself. So now we just got to figure out, well, how do we get that part done? Well, the way that we do that is we come in here to our add in action step. So I'm going to click add in action. And then we're going to use another variable action, which is called append to array, because we're dealing with an array variable. So I'm going to click on the append to array variable. All right, so for the name, this is the name of our actual variable, so of our attachments. Now for the value, this is where we're going to use that array structure from earlier. That's why I did the send email first, so I could get the actual structure itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste all of that in. And then the last thing that I want to do here is get rid of those hard coded because we're actually going to, it's going to pass in the name. It's going to pass in the content bytes. So I'm going to remove this information here. Oop, it's going a little bit crazy here. Sorry. So we're going to remove the test content. And again, we're going to remove the name. So we just have name and now we just have content types. So now the question becomes, well, what does need to go here? We got to have something. Well, this is where we're going to use the dynamic content. So for the name, this is the name of our file. So I'm going to search over here for my display name. All right. So this is the display name of the attachment. I'm going to choose it here. And then for the content bytes, what I'm going to choose is the file content. So bring in the name of the file and then bring in the content of the file. And then we're going to store all of this in array. So we're almost there. We're getting super close to being done here. So my last thing to do is I now have an array that's going to be stored. I need to use that inside of my email. So I'm going to come on over to my send in email action. All right. So in my email action, I'm going to come on down and what I'm going to choose here is I don't want this old one here anymore. So I'm going to come on back on over. I don't want those hard coded test attachments, names, attachment content. So I'm going to switch this to input entire array. And now I can pass an array because I'm in the array section. So I'm going to choose this. I'm going to click my var attachments. So now that I have that set up, all right. I'm going to come on over here and click on test. It says, hey, this defini definition contains invalid parameters. Well, what's the issue here? Well, right now it's not currently liking the way of my, uh, my JSON, so to speak, that we have inside of here. Uh, and if you're like, what's JSON? That'll be a little bit later in the course or <laughs> the YouTube series. But what it's missing, I did this on purpose, is sometimes you'll be coding a flow and you're like, ah, oh, I thought I did everything right, but not. You'll usually get some really good errors here. And you probably already saw when I was doing it. What I missed was after that double quote uh, for the content bytes, it needs a colon there. So that's all I got to do here because each time you have an array, you've got to have that name and that value pair. So after content bytes, I'm going to come on in and I'm going to add what it needed, which is what it needed was the colon. So now I'm going to save my flow. Ah, the colon up. Oh, look at that. The colon got placed at the end there. So see, there we go. So again, just add a little there, so we'll hit save. So again, it's the name, colon, then the content, name, colon, then the content. Now I'm gonna retest this flow out. I don't wanna go back and remake the record, so I'm gonna say do it from the last time you ran, which was 11 minutes ago. I'll hit test here. My flow is now running, and in just a second, I will now get an email, and in this email, I now have both files for the exact same email. So a little bit more advanced if you're new to the Power Platform uh, with Power Automate. And again, this is Power Platform for educators. But if you follow those steps there, it will get you in the right direction. So we put a little bugs in there as well. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If that is the case, I'll be seeing you in more future episodes for this Power Platform for Educators series. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.